from the mountain, as we call it, to the church. I wasn't sure about how to start this speech today. In the outdoor hydrological laboratory of Bibe's father, who insisted that his son first learn a scientific discipline before he set out to make the world a better place as a journalist. At the Austrian conference, where he first met Trevor Pinch, with whom he would develop the social construction of technology research program. Or in India, where Weber found his own outdoor laboratory for making the world better and was introduced to Indian hand weaving through his wife, Tony. Or at the farm in Twente, where he had a wonderful time as a researcher, followed by his move to Maastricht in 1990. But then I found the following quotes on the UM website from one of your students in Cultures of Arts, Science and Technology, the program that Bibe has set up. And I quote this student, he says, I think we might be the last cast group that had the privilege to be lectured by Bibe Beiker personally, a luminary in the fields of science and technology studies. His work on the social construction of technology deals with the question why technology looks the way it does. He introduced me to the idea of co-evolution between technology, science and society. I'm still quoting. I was academically starstruck when I first shook his hand. To have someone that knowledgeable taking you seriously as a student and really taking time for you is a big advantage." Unquote. Now this quote is not only a short and very sweet introduction to Weber's academic work, but it particularly emphasizes his excellent teaching and his gracious personality. Or as close colleague Karin Weisterfeld describes, Weber possesses the natural ability to instill confidence in people which results in a kind of generalized fatherliness. For students, it's priceless. They feel seen and become more motivated. That teaching ability must be partly genetic, because Weber's father, a professor of coastal engineering, I've been told, had teaching in his bones. But for Weber, it only surfaced during his physics studies, when he taught that subject at a secondary school in Rotterdam Feyenoord. Although that talent wasn't apparent from day one, when the chaos reached a peak during his first year, Weber said, guys, if you don't listen, I'm done. I'm going to read the newspaper. That made an impression. The class was quiet. But the next lesson they had the nerve to ask, sir, did you bring the paper today? And with that, the chaos returned. <laughs> In another location, armed with a lot of experience from the first year, it went well, and he seemed to enjoy it. Weber has often said that he would, have, uh, he would have retired as a physics teacher if the school hadn't let him go due to declining student numbers. I think we're all a little bit happy that didn't happen. Weber's desire to make the world a better place led him, through a combination of studies in physics and philosophy, to the farm of professors Boskma and Smit on the University of Twente campus. And because there was some room left at the farm, the man was recruited who he had just met at an Austrian conference and with whom he clicked both substantively and personally, Trevor Pinch. In his words, and I quote, we were both about the same age, same disposition, and both were tall, thin dudes with untamable hair sitting at opposite desks high in the attic the two started scheming and playing around with how they would transform the study of technology it didn't seem like work at all we sat in that attic putting together the pieces of a jigsaw pinch recalls 
If you ask Wiebe what puzzle pieces he contributes to in their collaboration, it'll get a bit quiet and you'll be able to tell that he feels kind of uncomfortable because his modesty is another distinctive character threat. Fortunately, Trevor knows exactly how to identify that. And I quote, At the most profound level, Bibe first saw the need for a social construction of technology approach and what sort of level of case study would be needed to exemplify this new approach. And Bibe brought to the collaboration his Dutch skills in language, patience, diplomacy, his eye for a wonderful case study, his story of the history of the bicycle. Plus, he was interested in the right sort of profound problem, one that could be solved by empirical inquiry. Wiebe has the genius for solving difficult administrative problems and making the solution seem as though it was obvious all along. He is rigorous, but knows when to be flexible. Unquote. Are you still comfortable? No. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> I have half an hour. No, no. Um, the latter also made him a very skillful department head, a job that he held practically throughout his career in Maastricht, in addition to a period as dean. He can fill out situations flawlessly and he knows how to lead a meeting with a lot of elegance and determination says Professor Weisterfeld. He stays friendly, gives people the room, accepts differences, until he chooses a direction with a decisive, fatherly, serious manner. His natural authority and the thoughtful way he phrases things makes him, above all, a true gentleman. According to your dear colleague, Professor Weisterfeld. A gentleman who, during an outing making pottery with colleagues, takes everyone's breath away because he seems to be able to shape the pottery as if it was something he did every day. And in the plane on the way to receive an award with a colleague, he'll write an acceptance speech that rhymes in an impeccable English in no time at all. And of course, Wiebe knows what he can do, but he didn't have a need to put himself in the spotlight all the time when it came to his career. He preferred to invest in building bridges and gave the people in his large network every possible opportunity. Interdisciplinarity could even be touted as his middle name. The combination of the social with the intellectual is probably part of the reason for his success. The cross-fertilization between education, research and hands-on work, for example as chairman of the Health Council Committee, which advised our government on nanotechnology in 2006, also proved to be beneficial. Meanwhile, he always served as a good example to his department. Don't worry about the details, just do good work. The Dutch educational phrase rust, reinheid and regelmaat, or calmness, cleanliness and order, seems to be the basis of your modest living and working style. With OK, if you really wanted to treat yourself, you bought yourself a krentenbol as a reward. <laughs> Weber, you would never say it out aloud yourself. That's why I'm taking this time. It's the only possibility we have. But you have been very important, and still are, for science, technology, and society studies worldwide. You've made the field more visible internationally, and you've also taken the administrative responsibilities very seriously. It is not for nothing that you received the Leonardo da Vinci Medal of the Society for the History of Technology in 2012 for your outstanding contribution to the history of technology through research, teaching, publications and other activities. And six years previously, the John Desmond Bernal Prize awarded jointly by the Society for Social Studies of Science and the Thomson Scientific for your distinguished contribution to the field of science and technology studies. These types of awards for your scientific work, plus the enormous appreciation of your colleagues and students, make you, in my eyes, and I think I speak for more people here today, a modern day hero. Modern day heroes don't make the world better by flying off to an emergency in a tight costume with a nice emblem on it and a cape flapping in the wind. 
though your untamable hair would blend well in that scenario. But modern-day heroes make the world a bit better by sharing all their talents with others and being good for everyone and everything around them, from bees and colleagues to grandchildren and students. I think it's therefore safe to say that the ambition with which you once begun, began your professional life, making the world a better place, has definitely been achieved. Together with many others, you would undoubtedly act immediately. But today, it is all about you. I'm going to finish by extending an enormous thank you on behalf of Maastricht University for all of the good and bridge-building work you have done. I wish you a lot of joy and happiness in the time that is in front of you. And fortunately, you're still going to spend some of that time at our university working amongst others in our ethics committee and I'm particularly uh, grateful also for that. Liebe, I wish you all the best and it is now time for you to share not your last thoughts but your thoughts with our audience. Thank you very much.